If there's one thing we know about East Texas in 2021, the weather doesn't let up. And if you think spring is going to be any different, think again. Severe weather season is almost here and CBS 19 wants to make sure your family survives the storm. Tornado safety, flooding safety. We we'll even use our long range forecast to pinpoint exact dates when severe weather could impact your neighborhood. It's about keeping you and your safe. Surviving the storm starts now. Hi everyone, I'm CBS 19 Chief Meteorologist Brett Anthony and thanks for watching Surviving the Storm. Over the next half hour, we're going to give you some tips on where to go to stay safe when severe weather strikes. We'll also tell you how to tell the difference between a microburst and a tornado. And we'll have some interesting severe weather tips when it comes to severe weather across East Texas. But we want to start with a look back 2020 and it was by all accounts a quiet year when it comes to severe weather unless there was severe weather in your neighborhood. But the first event of the season occurred January 10th and January 11th. As you can see, there aren't a lot of tornadoes, but there were some small ones. For instance, this one near Karnak, another small one just to the southeast of Highway 43. And we had this one southeast of Anadarko near Highway 84. That was just west of Mount Enterprise. That was an EF1 tornado. A little bit of damage reported there and another one northwest of Rusk that was on the ground for a short period of time. And also on January 11th, Nacogdoches saw this short lived tornado just to the west. Then we waited till April 12th. We had one significant tornado that crossed Interstate 20. This was a much bigger outbreak for southwest Arkansas and northwestern parts of Louisiana. On April 22nd, there was an EF2 just to the east of Powderly. And then we waited until May 16th for a few isolated events across far northeastern parts of Texas. This storm got a lot busier as it moved into southwestern Arkansas. So the question we pose here tonight was East Texas lucky or was it the weather pattern? National Weather Service meteorologist Charlie Woodrum has the answer. That uh, timing, a lot of it was timing. The time, the time when storms move through the area is so critical. Uh, and a lot of times they were moving through East Texas just the way it fell last spring, they were moving through East Texas earlier in the morning or overnight. And then as they would get further east to start to tap into more of the daytime heating, that's when they would really fire up and, and produce the tornadoes. And so by all accounts, 2020 was a quiet year. And if we want to talk about a significant tornado, we have to go back to April 13th, 2019. That is when a tornado, two tornadoes, in fact, crossed through the city of Alto. The second one was a powerful tornado that may have stayed on the ground for 44 to 48 miles. Before that tornado hit Alto, it hit the Caddo Mounds historic site. By the time the last of the Alabama Cachada came in, he had to help me pull the door shut. And he, I didn't see it, but he did. He said, it's right there, meaning the tornado. Rachel Galan, the assistant site manager at Caddo Mounds State Historic Site, and 80 others took shelter in the museum. The museum sat on this concrete slab. A large crowd was celebrating Caddo Culture Days just before the EF3 tornado hit. We basically had only minutes notice. We're in a cell phone dead zone. There, nobody's phones were going off to let us know that there was actually a tornado uh, embedded in the wavefront. The Texas Historical Commission provided this aerial photo of the tornado's path. The tornado scarred the ground as it tore across the sacred site. The tornado left Galan and everyone there that day with a different perspective. You know, we don't get to ignore warnings and we don't have the luxury to pretend that those things don't happen to us, all of us who are here and, and who know us, they've, they've seen that. And it creates a level of empathy for everybody else in the world that you see going through climate disasters and weather disasters and, um, and war. I mean, that's what it felt like. It felt like we had been hit by a bomb here at Caddo Mounds on a really special day for us. The historic site hopes for more special days. Construction on a new museum will start soon. The concrete bench you see over my shoulder, it was there the day the tornado hit. It withstood 160 mile an hour winds. So it's a reminder of the past but it's also going to be a part of the new museum. So it's a link to the future. Hard lessons were learned. Lessons site manager Tony Souther wants to share. One of the things that I can suggest is a weather radio, have a way of uh, knowing what's coming your way and be prepared, have a plan and practice your plan. Don't wait till it's too late and have supplies on hand. 
We'll be right back, but first, here's a trivia question for you. Between 1951 and 2011, how many funnel clouds were reported across the state of Texas? Was it 555, 8,007, 10,083, or 100,000? We'll give you the answer later on Surviving the Storm. My name's Colleen Campbell. I'm your weekend weather person on CBS 19. What I find interesting about East Texas is that I've only been here for two months and already had my share of severe weather, including snowstorms, and I'm looking forward to this severe weather season for keeping you all safe. Well, I first got into weather when I was training under the chief meteorologist at my first station. So I was actually a reporter and weather just took my interest right away and I fell in love with it. So I love looking at weather at a local and global scale and it's fun for forecasting for all of you guys. 